one power supply or battery and maybe a combination of series and parallel uh, resistors. What happens when we have more than one power supply? Uh, it gets a little complicated to identify which way the current's flowing and that kind of thing. So we're going to talk about two rules that will help us in a problem solving strategy called using Kirchhoff's rules to solve circuits. But before we do that, let's do a little review. So far, we've learned about Ohm's law. And we've talked about circuits. We've talked about resistors that are in series. That the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of all the resistors. And that these resistors have the same current, but the voltage of the equivalent circuit or the battery is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. And we've also talked about resistors that are in parallel. And we've said that 1 over their equivalence resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And that these guys all have the same voltage, but that their currents add up to be the equivalent current of the entire circuit. So let's talk about more complex circuits. And let's just start off with a one battery circuit. So with that in mind, let's take a battery and um, resistors in series. And we're going to talk about something called the loop rule. And the loop rule says that the sum of all the, the voltage losses and gains equals zero. It's really a conservation of energy law because no energy can be created or destroyed. Remember, voltage is basically the potential at a given point between two points per unit charge. So how much potential energy the, the um, object will gain or lose as it goes across those battery ter terminals. And it depends on which way they're going, right? So think about this way. By definition, when current goes from po negative to positive, you're gaining voltage. So it'll be a positive change in voltage from point A to point B. But if you were to go the opposite way, like this, you would be going from positive to negative, and so you would be losing voltage, losing potential that way, and so you would have a loss of voltage. So by definition, when um, you take a path around a circuit, if you go across that element from its negative to its positive uh, potential, you're going to gain voltage. But if you go the opposite way, you're going to lose voltage. So let's talk about how we know what the polarity is of our devices. Well, it's pretty easy. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide how the current flows. And it always flows from positive to negative. So as it goes through this circuit, it's going to come here and it's going to hit this resistor. This will be the positive side of the resistor. This will be the negative side of the resistor. And it'll go through it. It'll hit this resistor. This will be positive and this will be negative. And it'll go this way from positive to negative. So notice that it loses a certain amount of energy when it goes through the resistor, right? So it had all this energy that the battery gave it, all this potential energy, gained all this potential energy, but now it's flowing downhill, right? Now it's uh, not flowing downhill. Now it's trying to go through this resistive material, so it's going to lose some of its potential energy. And it's going to lose even more of its potential energy and even more of its potential energy, and then it's going to gain it all back in the thing. So if we call this R1 and R2 and R3, and we call this the battery, okay, the loop rule says that as you go through the circuit, if you go from that, 
if you look at all of the gains and you identify all of the losses, they're all going to add up to zero. So the gain of the battery plus the negative voltage across the first resistor plus the negative voltage across the second resistor plus the negative change in voltage across the third resistor is going to be equal to zero. And the way that you find those voltages, right, V of the battery is probably going to be given to you, and plus and minus, I'm just going to say minus, right, is going to be the current through that system times R1 minus I times R2 minus I times R3. It's going to equal zero. So that's what the loop rule says. So let's do an example. So we guess we use the loop rule to find the current in this system. So the loop rule, first of all I'm going to do is I'm going to is figure out which way the current goes. And I'm going to assign polarities. This will be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And this is already negative and positive. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify some junctions here, just so some points so that I can give you know instructions about very specific about which way I'm going around. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a way to go around this circuit. It's called a loop. So I'm just going to draw a loop that's going clockwise. So my loop goes from 3, 4, 1, and 2. So this is loop 3, 4, 1, and 2. Well, I'll make this trek around, and now I'm going to write the loop rule. So I'm going to add up all the voltage gains and um, and losses, and I'm going to add them up to zero. So as I go through this loop, I'm going to have, as I go through this loop, I'm going from negative to positive through the battery, which is a gain of nine volts. And then I'm going to go across R1, and the voltage across this would be R1 times I, the current in this thing. So minus R1I minus R2I minus R3. I equals zero. So 9 volts minus 3,000 I minus 10,000 I minus 5,000 I equals zero. Now I can solve for I. 9 volts equals, I'm going to add all of these to the other side. 3,000 and 10,000 is 13,000 and 5,000 is 18,000 times I. So I equals 9 volts divided by 18,000 ohms. Okay, so that's going to be 5E to the negative 4 ohms. That's my current. If I want to know the voltage across them, I'm just going to multiply that current times 3,000 to find the voltage drop across R1 or the voltage drop across R2 and so forth. 